this last little bit of time we have here. I hope, I hope everyone had a good, uh, good food and some time to talk. Kind of like some lively stuff. So thank you for bringing the food. So I want to talk about fermented animal food. So I made my chicken food here and brought it in. I made this this morning because this is tomorrow's food for my chickens. So I do a fermentation for probably about 24 hours, somewhere in that time frame, 24 to 30 to 12 hours, somewhere in there. Um, what's happened in this time that it's fermented, and we'll, we'll pass this around, um, and you can look at it, smell it, see it, it should all be safe. And Taste it? No, I wouldn't taste it. <laughs> like I was saying earlier, that when I ferment a food like this, and then I feed it to my chickens, even though they're old, they're still laying nice sized eggs and laying fairly consistently for me. Um, and so I believe that fermentation is. It's, it's helping the digestion that's happening here. Um, my method of fermentation that I'm doing here, however, is only 24 hours. So essentially what I'm doing is sort of a probiotic effect. So as opposed to it being a um, completely digested and getting a lot of different microorganisms out of it, it's starting to break things down. So it's like a pre-digested thing that's happening. Um, and this is the way that I've been fermenting the feed. However, I was talking to Chris Trump the other day in Kohala, and he was talking about in the White Chow book, and he, he said to me, man, nobody reads that book. I think people do read it, but it's just, it's hard to understand what it's saying. Um, but here on page 32 in the beginning, there's this picture of this really, really, really fermented food that it looks like this huge like cake patty thing. And this is the other part of fermented food that I saw in Korea that I, I haven't done myself, but that I do this sort of 24 hour digestion. This one here is about three weeks. And so what's happening in this process here is you're changing the food from what what it is into fungus and, my, and and bacteria and fungus. So you're taking what the food was and changing it into microbiology in this case here. And so a fungus, like a mushroom, if you go buy a mushroom at the store, it's closer to meat, like an animal, than it is to a plant, like a tree. So fungus is more like meat than it's like plants. So when you get fungus to grow in your pile like this, which is a three week thing, you're getting extreme amounts of fungus that are really complex. And you're essentially changing this from what was plant matter into what's now almost like meat. Because the fungus are like meat, right? The mushrooms, fungus, that's what they're like meat. So you're changing carbohydrates, sugars, starches, those things, into amino acids and nitrogens and proteins. So you're taking stuff that was just carbs and not really worth much into nitrogen and proteins, which are worth a lot in terms of animals and eating. Animals, it's very important for them to get their the nitrogen and proteins and amino acids that they need. A plant, you can kind of, doesn't need as much. This is really important. So this is another system that I haven't done and haven't worked on, but this is a complete transformation from carbohydrates into um, amino acids and proteins that I want to get more into this. Um, like I said, in this process here, essentially I haven't grown those proteins, so it hasn't made that transition in 24 hours from being carbohydrates into, into being this fungus. It's still pretty much what it was initially. I didn't really change the content of it. What I did was breed a lot of beneficial microorganisms on it that will help in digestion and also started to kind of soften and break it down, but I haven't transformed it. So 
But this here will unlock way more nutrients than you're gonna get without, like if I just fed the dry feed to my animals, I'm not gonna get nearly as much bang for my buck as if I ferment it this way for 24 hours ahead of time. So I just want to make that clear. There's two kind of different things I'm talking about. One is the, the fungus where you're growing like this really meaty pile of stuff. Another is this, what I've been doing, which is kind of like pre-digestion type of fermentation. Okay. So everyone got a chance to kind of see that? So it's, again, I'm using pretty Babylon stuff there, which by Babylon I mean stuff that I bought straight from uh, Miranda's or Dell's to make this mix. And I'm not even using non-GMO stuff. It's really, you know, like, sorry if you don't like GMOs and you got too close to that. Um, but, but I do believe that, no, but I do believe that if you take a product like this, no matter how it was grown before, and you let the microorganisms introduce it, they're gonna break it back down into a much more natural, much more digestible, much more palatable form here. So, uh, pre-digestion on anything, like no matter what your source on it, adding microorganisms, beneficial microorganisms into your mix is gonna make a difference. And the basic recipe that I'm following here, that amount you see there is to feed roughly 20 chickens. I have, like I said, uh, 14 or 15 hens and one rooster. So that's a little bit more than I need in the excess food I just store the pigs. Because I just measured a little bit too much. That's about to make enough for 20. Um, so my general recipe here is pretty darn simple. It's one, uh, there's three parts to it. One part is this uh, scratch grain, which could be um, like, it's, it's the, the grain component of it. Um, one third of it is the layer pellet, and one third of it is fruit. So one third, one third, one third is my base recipe to that, so I'm feeding them. But in this case, what you can do is this is like a real conventional, like what I bought, not, not a whole lot of um, labor out to what we have here. But in this recipe, basically in your, the grain pellet things that I have here, you could substitute that with like your house scrap type stuff. So things that are coming out of your kitchen that are gonna have more of those proteins. And um, if you're a vegetarian, you may also wanna supplement your, um, your compost so it gets lots of uh, bugs and insect life in there. Um, but usually if you have like meat scraps or something, that should be sufficient to provide the replacement of the layer pellets. Because essentially the component I want in the layer pellets is that protein which has certain uh, amino acids and, and proteins in there. Um, so, but you can do that through house scraps. The grain stuff up here, you can largely replace with um, grass. So if you go out and you cut long grass, especially seed grass, and you cut that stuff, and you ferment it here as well, that's another super easy local replacement for, for that. Um, forage. Um, and then the fruits are, you know, whatever fruits around might be, papaya, squashes, I don't know. Um, Bananas, yeah. Um, energy that way. Um, and so what I what I did in that one, I guess I can I guess I can mix it up here and just do it. Um, so I mixed in one third, one third, and then my fruits. You'll notice that I, if you saw in the bucket, they're cut in eight pieces. And the reason I'm trying to do that, and the reason I'm really adding the papaya fruit into it, is that. I'm trying to increase the surface area, and it also helps keep moisture in there overnight as it's fermenting. Because I used pretty dry ingredients to start with, that extra moisture helps the microorganisms proliferate. If it's too dry, they're just gonna sit there and be like, it's too dry, I can't do anything. So you don't wanna over moisturize it, but a wet fruit or something like this um, helps to keep that moisture in there. Um, 
And so I'll cut them into eight pieces just to make lots of surface area. And the, they love the seeds. Any, anything with seeds in it. Um, and so that's my base mix. And however, however you can get there, that's great. And that's like what you should be doing. Um, but the, the whole magic to this system is my natural farming inputs that I add into it. And that's really what makes the system work. And so, what I've been doing most recently is I also add a little bit of water into this to moisten it. And you're going to have to figure out for how much feed you're making, how much water you need. Because you don't want it too wet, it's gross, and you don't want it too dry, the microbes aren't going to breathe. But I found roughly this is probably going to be slightly too much water, so I think I'm going to dump a tiny bit more out for this. So with this water here, I'm going to mix these natural farming inputs into this water. I could just take them and put them straight into here onto that dry material that's in my bucket and my cut the bias because I don't really want to make a huge mess and cut these up. You guys can just imagine. There's a huge mess, but there isn't. Um, but I'm just going to start with this dry material. So into the, into the water here, this is what I want to add. And I happen to know that this is um, 11 milliliters, this cap. Um, just happens to be 11 milliliters. Um, and so with that measurement, I'm going to add these different ingredients in and explain them kind of as I do it. And to, to start, I'm going to add um, a quarter of this. So I don't know what 11 divided by 4 is. Anybody? <laughs> almost 3, right? OK. So I'm going to add almost 3 milliliters. <laughs> into here um, because the vinegar essentially acts as a um, it helps the microbes to break down things so if there was some sort of compound that was too long the vinegar will break it apart and so it helps to start pre-digesting things with the vinegar the vinegar also acts as sort of a, a flush that when the animal or when the, when the microbes metabolize it um, it will flip um, from being acidic to being alkaline. And that flip helps um, also, again, in digestion and um, nutrient <laughs> movement throughout the system. What kind of vinegar is that? Um, so this is just brown rice vinegar that I bought from the store. Um, but I've been making vinegar from bananas. And that stuff is way better. Um, so you want a grain vinegar, one from rice or bananas. Um, you going for like a 500 to 1 dilution? Is that Essentially, yep. Yeah. yeah, into the water from, from what I'm adding here. But, then, but it's based on my total volume here. Yeah. Yeah. Five, so, so yeah, 500 to 1 with the vinegar. Um, and, and, but I actually, what I've been doing on the vinegar lately is 1,000 to 1 because what I've been finding is that my vinegar is actually too strong because I am also going to add in calcium here, which also has vinegar in it. Um, so just be mindful of how much you're adding. Um, so vinegar to help the digestion. The next thing I add into here is the lactic acid bacteria. And lactic acid bacteria is a really, really strong microorganism. It um, helps uh, get rid of other pathogens. It helps to sanitize the environment. Um, if for some reason this gets anaerobic, so it gets cut off from oxygen, it prevents pathogens and bad microorganisms from taking over because it can live without oxygen as well. Um, so it's a really strong microorganism to add in. Also, when the animals eat it, it helps them in their digestion. Are Commonly you creating your lactic acid, or are you uh, uh, purchasing? I made this from milk. All right. Mm -hmm. Made it. It has sugar in it. Then. It does. Yeah. 
Um, and so again, I'm adding half this thing in here. So if it's like six ish mils of this. Um, so essentially, I've added twice the amount of um, vinegar. And next, I'm going to add in comfrey, fermented plant juice. So you can make a fermented plant juice from anything. What this is especially good for is that it's really high energy. So the microorganisms can immediately um, digest it and then go to work on more complex things such as this food. So it's like a really simple, quick food. It's like an energy bar form. So they, they eat that, they get going, and then they can digest this big thing later. So it helps to stimulate the biology, especially rapidly, because I'm only doing this for 24 hours. So I'm going to add the same amount of, as I added lactobacillus in. And that food helps now for the LAB and also the IMOs to, to eat it overnight. And then, because this is for chicken food, um, I'm going to add just a very, very tiny bit of calcium, so like just one milliliter of it, because it's just to help them harden their eggs a little bit. Some people feed them oyster shells and those things. I just put the calcium just straight into their water, and it seems to be like no adverse effect, and I get strong eggs, and I don't feel oyster shell. So, so just a tiny bit. calcium, uh, what source are you getting your calcium? <laughs> the guy that made this is sitting in here. Um, so I use coral, but not like live kind. So please don't anybody think that I would have this use coral, not the live one. The one that's gonna be rolling around down to the beach on the rock that kinda looks like a rock. Not the don't tell anyone else anything like that, please. Like, it's like the kind you get, uh, you get, you used to be able to get from Kauai, I guess, kind of, like the coral sand. Yeah, yeah you, you can, can actually buy coral sand. At ten dollars, yeah. 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 Ten dollars and fifty dollars bag. So. Yeah, you can use crushed coral, and then if you heat it a little bit, and then dissolve it in vinegar, you get water soluble calcium. That's a recipe. How much of that cap do you think? Just a, like an eighth of it almost. Like just a tiny little, little bit, because it, it's more vinegar, and I, you don't need a whole lot of calcium for them. There's, there's more calcium in all these other things, but it's just this is water soluble calcium, so it's really available to them. Did you say you added to the water Uh, not, not recently. I haven't. Uh, you, you, this same, this same thing that I just mixed here, you could also, uh, have your animals drink this water. Especially if they're feeling sick, if they drink this water, it'll it'll kind of revitalize them because the although although if you look in here, it's it's too strong of a dilution. You want to dilute it actually out to your one to five hundred and one to a thousand. Um, but so so now that I got this water like this, the reason I didn't just pour these in is because they would be not well distributed in here. So I added it all to this water, and then after I got the water, then I just and then mix that around and it absorbs it all up. And it should be the same consistency as that guy there that went around. And so by just adding these simple ingredients every day and making the food a day ahead, I'm unlocking probably twice the nutrition out of the same food that otherwise you know, would have just gone away. So this, it's a real easy, simple formula of basically um, you know, vinegar to help break it down, lactic acid to start digesting it, the fermented plant juice to feed the system, and then just a little bit of calcium to kind of help my chickens out. It's here within my one-third, one-third, one-third. And the last thing that I would add in here that I forgot it on my porch is a little handful of IMO that I would have put in there before I did the thing. And that's my IMO number four. And a lot of times I'll come out the next day to feed them this bucket. And this bucket will have the white, um, you know, like bacillus type hairs on it, and it's growing. And also, sometimes if you if you leave it for a, you know, 24 to 30 hours, um, it'll be hot. It'll be really warm. So this is extremely bioactive, especially with that much lactic acid bacteria in there. 
that's a lot, and that's really going to kickstart this system to really help in digestion for your animals. So, any, any questions on this? Yep. Is there, um, obviously, the other one is if the community is still be edible, is there a time frame on this that, you know? I would definitely use it within 48 hours. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, because because the other system is different the way the nutrients are balanced. This one, you would have to continually feed it these nutrients to keep it alive if you were going to go beyond 48 hours. So you don't cover it either? Typically, I just take the bucket lid and put it on loosely so it's not tight on it, but it just, um, and sometimes gnats and things are in there, but I figure that's a good thing because the extra insect protein is good. So it's one good scratch green, one good pellets, and one good fruit? Yeah, that's, that's what I do with this simple, like, the most straightforward recipe, like, but you can make substitutions in there. What number of animal uh, do you, I mean, like, ducks obviously would do fine with it, chickens would do fine. <coughs> Are there any, uh, take, what other animal would you tend to feed a similar type of, of an enhanced food to that you would? Well, I would say, I would say anytime, like, like a, anytime you're going to buy something from the store, like alfalfa pellets for your horse or something, you could use this same thing. And any animal that's going to eat this material that comes in this dried, like, pelletized form, you re-enliven it, and then it's going to add more value to that. So, so anytime you're doing that. And I'm pretty sure it works for almost any animal. You could do this for your dog food. You could do this for, you know, anything. Well, for horses, you can definitely. Mate, will the lack, well, okay. <laughs> I know of a horse that died from, from the, it, it got into the food and died. So yeah. Other than that, I, I think it goes to the animal. But I was just curious if you had any. Yeah, yeah, okay. Dre, does it matter how the ingredients are added into, um, do it as you demonstrated, or, you know, like, who can recipe and just, um, so there was sort of an order of operations there that I had the bucket of water already full. That if I had added the concentrates all to each other and then diluted it, it wouldn't have been good because the vinegar would have killed it all. So you, you saw, I already added it to the water. So I had my water and then I added my dilutes. But that's the only really thing you want to make sure you're diluted before you're adding the vinegar to your other inputs. You'll kill them. Any other questions? Did you see them make the three weeks still? Yeah. Yeah. Is that more or is that chicken food also? So with the with the three week pile, what they're doing is they're able to eat a lot of um, like house scrap type of waste. Whereas in this system, if you know if the if the house scraps is exceeding one third of my thing, I have to increase my other things to balance that. Whereas in that pile, they were able to use a lot of house scraps because it was almost like an animal four pile on the ground while they were doing it. All right. I think it would work with just the uh, plastic acid bacteria. I mean, a lot of times that's all I have on hand just because it's easiest for me to make. And so I do that like religiously with the chips when they're little. I just do water in the lab and uh, mix it up and let it sit for a day. But uh, do you think there's a benefit to that or is it kind of missing out? Plant juice and all that. Oh. Better than nothing? I just personally I'm a fan of the fermented plant juice and what I what I know for a lot of um, things where I see people use EM or lactic acid is a lot of times um, if there isn't enough food present, it's such a powerful microorganism, it may eat other things inadvertently. So it may eat the sugars out of something that you didn't want it to. So if you always add fermented plant juice while you add the lactic acid bacteria, it prevents that overeating and it always ensures there's enough like, food. No, be careful not to put too much on your hair. In, in this recipe, the, the, this one, it's mixed with equal parts of sugar too, so it does have that food available to it, so it's harder to overdose this way. Um, 
take it easy on him. Like, yeah. Well, then he seemed to be through a big tub, but I kind of just. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to overdose on this because one time my friend drank at least half of a half gallon of it in one like four hour session and I was like, you drank all that? And he was like, yeah. Was like, and he didn't die, so. Is that, is that fermented blood juice you're holding that he drank? Yeah, it's lactic acid bacteria. Okay, I love you. Okay, so. Um, Yeah, yeah, they will. Um, but if if you're going to clean their water out daily, that's probably fine. But if you're going to leave the lactic acid in there for a while, then you're going to run into interesting things happening. <laughs> production chickens, um, which are a heritage bird, um, which has been developed um, for its laying ability and also its meat ability. And he was looking for some people to do kind of a system where they have enough birds to um, consistently supply a restaurant. So I think why he wants to work with other people is he doesn't want to raise that many birds himself, but to kind of work to um, have it so it's consistent with these heritage birds. And also as a local project, really breed up our stock so that we have really, really good genetics. Because these are already a good start, but he's really into... You breed them here, you think? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's his idea. Because he, you know, he went and he's like measuring the head and all this stuff to like see what, what like a chicken is supposed to be like before we just mass produce them. And, um, and bring those genetics kind of back. Um, so if anyone's interested, uh, his email is Eric W. Uh, e R I C W at Calavo, which is C A L A V O dot com. How did Calavo get picked in there? <laughs> He's the vice president of their Hawaii operations. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Bird, the chicken called? Uh, buckeye chicken. And does he know? Has he got the numbers on like how fast they grow out? He has a lot of information on that. Yeah. And he's been talking to some. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's 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 the thing. That's the thing, right? Because then the chefs to buy them that don't have the big breasts and everything, you know, it's something we run up against. People are used to seeing the chicken, the real meaty chickens, you know. But the, the meat quality is better. Oh, for sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But marketing is